Good morning. <clears throat> For the next 10 minutes, I wanted to give you guys an introductory overview to Wireless Heart technology. Wireless Heart is described as a self-healing, self-optimizing, secure wireless mesh technology. It's built on radios that are, use uh, low cost, low data rates, and, and low speed uh, performance. Uh, for that reason, it's used in process control networks. It's an ideal fit for those environments where they're using very low amounts of data to transfer information, uh, remoted in sensor, or mounted in uh, sensors that are connected to batteries that can last five to seven years within that environment. Okay. My name is Troy Martin. Um, like many of you, I've deployed wireless networks and done installations in many different environments, industrial, or sorry, uh, enterprise environments. Uh, carrier grade deployments, which I personally define as something that requires high availability. In those environments, 100,000 access points may be a small network. Uh, you may be able to uh, carry your own weight if you deployed a million access points in your network. Uh, industrial grade networks uh, would be in uh, mines, refineries, chemical plants. In a past life, I used to work in the industrial space. I walked through a refinery, there was an explosion, people were burned, taken to hospitals and in helicopters. I decided to move out of that space and focus more on the in enterprise and carrier grade environment. Uh, so again, what I want to talk to you guys about today is wireless heart. I'm going to cover what is wireless heart, where, where is wire heart, wireless heart used to give it some more context, and then I'll dive into how wireless heart itself works. Okay? So wireless heart, it's defined by the Heart Foundation. So in 1990, 1986, the Heart Foundation got together and standardized the heart protocol. Back then, it ran over a wired network, so it leveraged the, the instrumentation network that used 40, 20 milliamp circuits, and it rode over those copper wires. Three months after the iPhone was released in 2007, version 7 of the wireless heart, st or the heart standard was released, adding wireless support for this protocol. It was also standardized by the International Electrotechnical uh, Commission as number 62591, uh, the great thing about standards is that there's so many to choose from. So everyone wanted to get on board with this. Uh, wireless Heart is loosely based on the IEEE 802.15.4 standard. right? So the 15.4 the is designed around uh, low speed, low rate transmissions. Uh, if you think of Bluetooth is the 15.1, it's more of a personal area network. Okay? It operates, Wireless Heart itself operates in the 2.4 band. So again, 2.4 isn't dead. It's, it's well used by, these, uh, by this protocol. Uh, there was a question earlier about how many channels are there in 2.4. Well, it depends on how you're, how you're perceiving 2.4 and what protocol you're talking about. With 15.4, there's 16 channels in the 2.4 band. Uh, but only 15 of those channels are used by Wireless Heart. And Wireless Heart itself has the ability to blacklist and exclude channels if there's too much interference or obstruction. I talked about the low power. So these sensors are connected to a battery that can be serviced, and they want it to be long-lasting. They don't want to be sending their technicians and their refineries out you know, every three months to change a battery. So these batteries can last five to seven years. And then one of the reasons they can do that is if I'm taking a temperature reading, maybe I only need to update when that temperature changes so I don't have to transmit constantly. Um, but the temperature is very slow changing. I'm not generating a lot of data. Maybe every, once every hour, I provide a temperature update. I can also harness power from solar energy or even the vibration of poles. Because I'm not using a lot of power, I can tap the energy of, of the wind. And one thing that's really unique uh, to the, the wireless heart is the ability to, to capture and leverage a spatial, spectral, and temporal diversity. So I'll cover more about that later, but just think, does Wi-Fi support that much diversity? So to put it to a little bit more context, some real-world deployments. Uh, we have some sensors mounted on this tank. And on the top right-hand corner is a gateway. So these sensors here, the, this is what they look like. So they're about roughly this size. Uh, they'll connect to a gateway. And in the bottom right-hand side, uh, just more of a marketing picture of how this could look in a network. That's uh, so where we have the gateway. Uh, there's five components to wireless heart. Uh, you have your field devices, which are your sensors themselves. You have wireless heart adapters. Uh, basically, think of that as like a wireless NIC that you can plug into a legacy heart device, uh, enabling it to be wireless. You have your gateways or your access points, which is almost like your root or your portal access point. You have a network manager, which is responsible for building the graph tree or deciding what path every sensor should take through the network to get back to the gateway. 
And then to initially configure your sensors, you have a wireless or a handheld device that you plug into each sensor to configure it with um, security keys and the network ID. Here's an example of different vendors that deploy wireless heart technology. Uh, I passed through the London Heathrow Airport on the way here. Uh, Alan Bradley, uh, there were a lot of advertisements there. They also supported, uh, sponsored some charging stations for your laptops. And I'll reference some design practices from Emerson Process Management. Uh, a reference to the, the spectrum that's used. So you guys should all be familiar with the, the dot 11 spectrum. Uh, for the 15.4, there's uh, or 16 channels that are available. In order to be uh, globally compatible, uh, wireless heart excluded channel 26. Uh, so you get maximum propagation or deployment potential for your products across the planet. Uh, the channels themselves are spaced five megahertz apart, but they're only two megahertz wide, right? So you get a lot of channel reuse. Here's what some of the frames look like. With respect to the, the PHY, or the, you know, the lower layers of the protocol, uh, we have the four bytes preamble start frame delimiter, which is typical what you'd expect. Uh, the length, uh, so the, the PSDUs are allowed to be you know, 1,016 bits or 127 bytes long. That's the maximum size of the frames. Okay, so they're not very large frames. Uh, they had beacon frames in here as well. Uh, that allows new sensors to join the networks. So they have to be, uh, the, the sensors and the gateway will advertise themselves periodically through beacons so they can be discovered. Uh, we have the concept of data frames and acknowledgement frames. Uh, every unicast frame that gets sent is acknowledged, very similar to Wi-Fi. Uh, the broadcast frames aren't sent, but every, every data frame, that unicast frame that's sent and gets acknowledged happens within a 10 millisecond slot time. So it leverages TDMA. It's very fixed intervals, very predictable, very reliable. We also have MAC uh, command frames, which kind of combines management and control plane functionality of Wi-Fi into a single frame type. And there's also the concept of a super frame, which com combines the collision avoidance with TDMA. Uh, so we have some initial beacons that go out. The contention access is a period of time that allows new devices to join. So a new device might sit there and listen for five or 10 minutes until it hears the network ID advertised and then connect to the network. And then following that contention access, that's where we have a TDMA kick in. So it's very scheduled, uh, predictable frames that are sent between those sensors. So again, wireless heart was based on the 15.4 the standard. It uses 250 uh, kilobits per second as its data rate. So this is very low data rate uh, for traffic. Uh, some modifications, uh, they fixed the, the layer two payload to be 127 bytes. Uh, the TDMA that I talked about and the fixed slot times. And all 15 channels can be used at the same time. So you could have 15 devices all transmitting at the same time, all on different channels, right? So you could have a lot of different activity going on at the same time. And uh, when an individual sensor transmits, that second frame attempt will be on a different channel. It doesn't reuse the same channel twice in a row. Okay. Uh, the 15.4 channel does support 900 megahertz. It's just not used by wireless heart. Um, and I talked about the OQPSK. I just want to point out some of the constellation charts. Uh, you guys should be familiar with QPSK, uh, which is used by the, you know, the 12 and 18 data rates in Wi-Fi. Uh, OQS O QPSK or orthogonal frequency or the orthogonal uh, method was used uh, to avoid crossing through the zero axis on the chart. It can create spectral regrowth, um, which can cause some interference issues. So there were some modifications there to avoid 180 degree phase shifts all the same instant. Some best practices for design, uh, a single gateway can only use 100 devices, uh, no more than seven hops. Uh, sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should, all right? Try avoid those hops. Uh, there should be at least uh, five devices within range of the gateway, and every device should be in within range of three neighbors, right? So you have some spatial diversity. Uh, try keep 25% uh, of your gateways within one, or of your sensors within one hop of that gateway. And if you have very uh, high response rates where you need fast information back from your sensors, have more of those devices around the gateway, okay? Uh, so here's a sample mesh network that would form. Uh, devices would connect to the gateway. Uh, in this example, I just want to show some communication. So let's focus on sensor E. It tries to talk to G on channel 15, but it failed for whatever reason. In the next time slot, in time slot one, it tries again on a different channel, right? So it's using uh, spectral diversity. If that fails, it'll try a different path through the network, right? So now it has spatial diversity and it's transmitting a different time to avoid that interference and obstructions uh, with noise. Okay. Uh, some, some security that's used, we have a network ID, which is like an SSID, a join key, which is like a pre-shared key, and there's end-to-end -end encryption for the, the sessions. 
Okay. You can uh, packet capture uh, with wireless heart uh, using different instruments, uh, additional resources. And that's it for my time. Uh, remember with TCP, to, get, to wrap up a session, it's a four-way handshake. Fin, ack, fin, ack. Thank you.